God is good. <coughs> Amen. All right, I will go and uh, go ahead with the message. And as I go uh, through the message, we will share a bit more of what God is doing there back at home in Bangalore, India. Amen. All right, I'd like to title my message this morning as What to Do When I Don't Know What to Do. Funny, huh? <laughs> what to do when I don't know what to do. Okay, turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor what to do when I don't know what to do. La. <laughs> right, what do I do when I don't know what to do? Second Corinthians, if you have your Bible, Second Chronicles chapter 20. Everybody got your Bible, handphones, wherever it is? Right, Second Chronicles chapter 20. You know where to find the book of Chronicles? Second Chronicles? Just after, yeah, clever church. Just after, pastor, amazing church, clever church. Right, I'm having a bit of boom, boom, sound. Right, just before that, uh, um, just, let's just go through some of the slides that we have, some photos that we have. Is that possible? Yeah, wonderful. Right, that is where we started. Right, I'm right on it. Right, this is the place that we started uh, church, all right? Uh, it actually started as a small house meeting. What happened was this house, uh, next slide, and uh, it was occupied by gangsters. Yeah, all the Indian machans. Huh? <laughs> so, <laughs> so they were occupying this house that belongs to one of our friends, uh, Ranganaths. Right, so uh, this, they, they got another bigger gangster to chase the gangster out of this house. Right, not me, right, another, not Paul. Okay, some other guys came and they got the gangsters out of this house and they said, why don't, no, and they want somebody else to occupy this house. So they find the pastor like, to stay. Right, just in case if the gangster come back, no, he won't do anything. No? So they were begging and they said, come, no, pastor, please come. We will know, we'll, you can use this house. It's big, it's huge. No, you can use it for your prayer. And the house was dirty, horrible, no, just, just dirty, black everywhere, gone dirty, that dirty, all right? And uh, Jaya used to sit on the floor and scrape marble by marble, tile by tile, you know, clean the house and things like that. So we did that, clean up the whole house. We eventually agreed. They said, oh, you can stay in this house till we die. Oh, good deal, man. Not bad. <laughs> Don't die so soon. <laughs> Right, uh, of course, we paid a small amount of rent, very small amount of rent, right, uh, to come here. We were just newly married. Uh, I was new to Bangalore. Jaya was new to Bangalore, so starting out with life, you know, starting out with business, you know, trying to take care of ourselves, at the same time, establish a church. Right, so it was a difficult time, and because this house was there, and it was cheap enough for us to take the rent, then we said, okay, we agreed to them was slightly expensive than the one that we used to stay. So we came over here and we started uh, uh, a small fellowship with just a couple of young people. So we didn't have much. Next slide. And uh, So what we did is we got tires and we painted those tires and uh, we did some of our... Yeah, you can go ahead with the next slide. And uh, <clears throat> we started setting up the house. Next one. And... Uh, it looks something like that, right? All the tires painted, made it look nice, the house, and that's where the church met. All right, good, nice beginning. Second Corinthians chapter two, verse four. Oh, uh, well, let's 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 uh, go from Second Corinthians chapter twenty. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, chapter twenty, verse one or so onwards. It says later. Let me just pull this out so that I can see the slides a bit more clearly. He said, later, the Moabites and the Ammonites and some of the Menutites came to wage war against Jehoshaphat. Some men reported to Jehoshaphat, a large crowd is coming against you from the other side of the Dead Sea from Edom. Right, so here is Jehoshaphat, if you know the bit of the story, here is Jehoshaphat, and suddenly a large number of army is coming and surrounding him. Right, he's about to be attacked by this large uh, army that's, that's coming just to wage war against these people. 
Right, so Jehoshaphat is panicking. I'm just going to go through the entire passage so that you can go back and read. So Jehoshaphat is panicking and he began to pray to God. And he said, Lord, right, Lord, we, we, we need your help. We just don't know what to do. It's so difficult. We see this vast army coming against us. Right, Lord, we just need to, we just don't know what to do. In verse 12, he says this, you are God. Won't you judge them? We don't have the strength to face this large crowd that is attacking us. He says, we don't know what to do. So we are looking unto you. Here is a king who was trained in the art of war. Who knows everything about wars and defending his country. Here is a king who was brought up to know everything about how to rule his nation, how to keep his people safe. And this king is coming to a place of declaration, place of uh, confessing that he did not know what to do. How many of you have been in that kind of situation? Yeah, you've been? Uh, some of you have never been there. You, know, just, you just know what to do, right? <laughs> some of us know we find it difficult. We come to a place where, you know, it's difficult. We don't know what to do. So after setting up this place and you know, we started the church, guess what? Army came, surrounded. We were in a place where they didn't know what to do. Because the guys who said you can have this house till I die, yeah, the same guy came back and said, I want the house back. <laughs> Are you? Yeah, man. Imagine us. <laughs> right, so the same guy looked at the house the way, you know, I told you, don't clean the house too much. <laughs> so she cleaned the house too much. So this guy came back and he said, wow, nice house, huh? mine. Huh? <laughs> I said, yeah, la, yours. La. And then he said, can I have it back? I said, you want it, really? <laughs> so he just gave us time, like two months to clear the house. Yeah, he gave us two months to clear the house. We already started fellowship. Church is already going. And to find such a place where, you know, to have house church and people will not complain. And uh, it was very difficult. We were trying to look for that price range and we didn't have enough finances to get a big house at that time, you know, to house the church, uh, the, the members. It was very difficult to, you know, to go ahead and look for places. So we started praying and we started thinking, what should we do? How we can go about it? All right, as Joseph had prayed, Lord, we are looking unto you. Come on, somebody say good amen. amen. All right, when things get difficult, we look unto our God. Amen. Come on, somebody say good amen. amen. Lord, we want to look unto you. So we started looking unto God, not to any man. Because we know whenever man gives you something, it won't last forever. Like this house, it didn't last forever, right? They want it back. But we say, God, this is your church. You take care of your church. We are looking unto you. Our help doesn't come from any man, but it comes from you, oh God. We started looking at God and we started praying. Then we found a small, small, small house, right? A very small one where we will not be able to go in, but we can manage because it was in the same surrounding and also people were a bit open to church and not having home churches and if we sing on Sundays, it's okay with them. The owners were good enough to say, okay, we are staying up there, you are staying down there, where you can have your church on Sundays, no, you can sing, you can make some noise, we are fine with it. So we went ahead and um, no, we started the church there and we... We, we, we established the church in a very small house. It was difficult. But as we begin to establish the church and we begin to pray, and this is one of the words that came to us um, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse uh, well, 20, verse, uh, let me just go to verse 16. It says, tomorrow, this as Joseph would begin to pray, and God begin to give him a prophetic word. And in verse 16, it says this, Tomorrow, go into battle against them. They will be coming up the seas pass. You will find them at the end of the valley. 
in front of Jerusalem's desert. And he says, you won't fight this battle. Instead, take position, stand still, and see the victory of the Lord for you. Come on, somebody say a good amen. How many of you know many of the battles that in our lives, we don't have to fight it. God will fight for us. Amen. All right, so this is the word that came to us. And we said, all right, God, you want us to take our position? We will take our position. See, many times when we are faced with problems, when we don't know what to do, what we do is, the first thing is we try to run away from our problems. We try to find an escape route. We try to find an easy way out of things. But here God says, Jehoshaphat, the army is coming with, uh, against you. You don't have to find an escape route. Instead of that, stand firm and take your position. Come on, church. Stand firm and take your position. Take the position that you're called up to. When there is a problem in your family, don't run away. As a father, stand firm and take your position and say, this is my family. I'm going to stand here. On behalf of my family, I'm going to take my position. I'm not going to run away. When the persecution comes against the church, we are not going to run away. We're going to take the position and we're going to stand and say, this is my position. I'm going to stand. This is the system of my belief. I believe in Jesus. I'm going to stand here and take my position and declare my faith. Come on, somebody say a good amen. amen. Take your position. So we say, all right, let's take the position. We go to the slide. So we got the small, nice house. All right, and because we cannot go inside the house, I'm sure Pastor Clarence will remember this. You, you were the pastor? No, this is the first team. All right, and uh, yeah, this is the stairs that go to the owner's house. So we had our house the other side. So all these guys, children, youths, and I will come and they'll meet outside the veranda. So that's where the church were. All right, so we gathered and... Uh, we prayed there, we worshiped there, and you can see a lot of young people. Next slide, and a lot of young people there. And uh, next one, you'll see somebody very familiar to you. <laughs> <clears throat> so as we stood there and take the position, right, a team from Destiny C3 Subang came over, next one, and we had a lot of food to eat. <laughs> 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 So you can name them one by one. Yeah. So this is the team that came over there. And uh, ah, next one, next one is this is the good one. Yeah. <laughs> Banana leaf. <laughs> um, later they had rice on it, not eating the leaf. Like, huh? All right. So this is what happened. All right. So we begin to stand there, take the position, and we prayed, and God sent people. Amen. See, in the battlefield, as we take the position, it's okay. But the next thing that comes and he says is, you have to stand still. Yeah? Stand still. Sounds easy, right? Many times God's solution is very easy. Right? Very easy. If you need something, pray. If you lack something, give. Sounds easy. Sounds very practical. Right? But how many of you know, how many of you have been in a fight? <laughs> hey. Suddenly all become good church. Fight? What is fight? Come on. <clears throat> have you been in a fight before? Yeah? Yeah, all right. Those of you put up the hand. All right, man. Right? When you fight, you know what is the easiest thing to do? Oh, let's, what is the hardest thing to do? Standing still. Right? Easy solution. But it is one of the hardest thing to do. In the lack, you give and you will get more. Lack. You have to give. Easiest thing. Give, la, you receive back. But that will be the hardest thing many times. God's solution might sound the easiest but the hardest. Amen? We struggle with that. So in the same way, we were struggling, we had a lot of things, and we were fighting, and we were trying to make things happen. So Destiny C3 came, and I said, all right, we're going to stand with you, easy, 
But it was the hardest time, of, one of the hardest time of our life. Very difficult, all right? Uh, in every aspect. You know, we were just married, so we were loving each other too much. <laughs> right? And, uh, no, uh, finances, time to establish our business, and all those things were there. Right? Finding people. You know, we didn't know anybody from Bangalore, trying to get contacts uh, established, com- uh, networking established, all these things happening at the same time. But God said, just stand still. I'll do it for you. Be faithful. So we were faithful doing what God called us to. Come on, somebody say good amen. See, when you're in a position where you don't know what to do, take your position. Don't run away just because we are not sure of what we have to do. Sometimes we give up so fast because we are not sure what we're supposed to do. Amen. But we stand still. This is my position. God, I'm not sure what to do. As a dad, my son is being rebellious. My children are being rebellious. I don't know what to do, Lord. I'm going to stand still. As a husband, I don't know. There's so much fights in my house. I'm just not getting it through with my spouse, my wife. But what do I do? I'll take my position. Escape route is never, never an option. Divorce is never, ever an option. Come on. Amen. With my church, I'm going to stand still. I'm going to do this. With my business, I'm going to stand still. I'm not sure how this is going to happen. The deal seems to be impossible. I don't know whether I'll be able to close this deal. But I'll stand still, Lord. I'll take my position. I'm not going to give up. Amen. Stand still. Some of you, God is speaking to you. Stand still. Don't go out. Don't change. Don't leave. Stand still. Amen. Take your position. Come on, somebody say a good amen. 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 Stand still. Take your position. See what God has for you. He who has called us, he is faithful. Amen. Amen. God who has called us, he is faithful. He will never leave us. He will not forsake us. Amen. If God has called us, he will come through for us. No matter how difficult, no matter how impossible it may look like, he will always, he has always been through and he will always come through. Amen. Come on, somebody say good amen. amen. See, one of the biggest problem or one of the biggest weapon of the enemy, anybody knows? Try to make us forget how good God is. That is why throughout the Bible or when God begins to lead the children of Israel, say, remember, remember your God. Remember what he has done for us. See, many times when we go through difficult times, when we stuck there not knowing what to do, what we do, we forget. You know what we do when we forget? Complain, lah. God, you're not so good, God. What's so good for about you? you know, only me, huh? you all know. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> difficult time comes. We forget about what he has done for us yesterday. How faithful he was yesterday to save us from the most difficult situations in our lives. To save us when we were lost. When we didn't know anything about him. He came through for us. To us. He rescued us. Amen. If he could send his son for us. If Jesus will come and die for each one of us. Isn't that faithfulness good enough to take me home all the way? God is good. He is faithful. Come on, somebody say good amen. So we met in this house. We took our position. And God was faithful. Right? And then God gave us this green building where I think Pastor Ramesh will remember. Next one. Right? So we came and we did something in this a small space that we had. Next one. No, it was during the Christmas time. Right? And Pastor Claire and Pastor Ramesh came again for the second mission trip to this place. Right? So this is the next place that we got. It was just a small four by four. By four. I think 40 by 60 or something. Just about 50, 60 people could sit. Small hall. So we took up this hall and we shared with the Nepali church during those days. And uh, we went with the Nepali church during those days and God was faithful. And the next thing that we wanted to do 
is to establish worship. Amen. We wanted to establish, we want to worship to go up. Because the Bible keeps reminding us when we begin to worship God, something happens. Come on, somebody say good amen. How many of you realize that? Well, so Jehoshaphat got this word of prophecy and God told him, take your position, stand still, and you see the salvation of God. You know what he did next? Anybody know? No. Anybody know why Jehoshaphat is called Jehoshaphat? Joe was so fat. Somebody got it a bit late. <laughs> all right. So don't be afraid. Don't be terrified. All right. So they begin to march out. All right. And as they begin to march, you know what they did? You know, anybody know what they did? They begin to worship God. They begin to just go through the words down there and you'll find it. They begin to uh, Joseph had begun to put all the musicians and all the worship team right in the front. Not the army. Right? Not the army. Not the guys with the sword. Not the fighters. Not the one with the arch. Not the one that looks the biggest. But he selected the worship team to be right in the front. Amen. So you put the, right, the worship team right in the front and they went singing praises to God. You know what they say? God is good. His faithfulness endures forever. God is good. His faithfulness endures forever. And they march out singing the goodness and the faithfulness of God. Come on, somebody say good amen. amen. Right, they begin to march out singing the faithfulness of God. How good God was. Right, and they begin to march out. As they begin to march out, you know what happened? Anybody know? In verse 21 onwards, after he has advised the people, right, he appointed people to sing to the Lord and praise him for the beauty of his holiness. And they went in front of the troops. They sang, thank the Lord because his mercy endures forever. And as we begin to sing and declare God's faithfulness, the God, God sent an ambush in the midst of the enemy. You know what happened? They started fighting at each other. The enemy. Right? They started fighting at each other. What happens when I worship? Why worship? Because worship is declaration of my faith that God is good. Thank you, Lord, that your mercy endures forever. I'm declaring my faith. Just don't stand there. Start declaring the goodness of God. Come on, church. When we go through difficult times, when we don't know what to do, when to do, how to do it, what we do, we sing praises. We sing praises. We declare God's faithfulness. We declare how good God is. We declare who He is. And that takes faith. When we worship, it is a declaration of my faith, of the one whom I believe in. Amen. I can't worship the one I don't believe in. God is good. Radio is good. No, it just don't happen. But when we believe in, when we have faith, when we sing, it's a declaration. This is who I believe in. Even when I don't see, you're working. Even when I don't feel you. You're working, but he's still there. He'll never give up. That's a declaration of faith. God, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. So difficult. I don't understand. But even when I don't see it, even if I don't feel it, I know you're there. You are there. You are my way maker. You're making ways for me. I don't feel it. I don't see it. But I know how the story will end. Come on. 
All right? Declaring my faith. So we started declaring our faith. We established worship. The book of Ezra, one of the first things they did once they laid the foundation of the temple, they restored worship. Amen? Why? Because that's going to declare a faith in the God whom we believe in. Come on, somebody say good amen. amen. So every time we come Sunday after Sunday, and as we stand here and we sing those songs and worship, what we are doing? We're declaring our faith. We're declaring our faith. So when things get harder, when we say, Lord, you are good, no matter what happens, you're faithful, Lord. And we sing those songs, what we're doing? We're declaring our system of belief in he who has called us. Come on, somebody say good amen. Amen. amen? Declare him. Declare who he is to the world. To our worship, to our adoration, to our worship. Amen. Declaration of my faith. So Josiah, uh, Jehoshaphat begins to declare his faith. He begins to declare the nation. Begins to sing of the goodness and who God is. And of course the ambush came and the enemy started fighting among themselves and died. And what happens as we begin to worship? God works supernaturally. Whenever we worship, I believe that it creates a platform for God to come down and work supernaturally. Yeah? That's why we do Sunday. I always tell the team back in Bangalore, I'm sure it's the same over here. Every Sunday, we want to create that platform to God to come down and to work supernaturally. Move supernaturally. Pastor was saying this morning, you don't have to wait for the pastor to come and lay hands on you. Some pastor from India to come and prophesy over you. <laughs> Indians are famous for this. <laughs> Everywhere. Oh, I'll give one chance, all laugh at me. Eh? <laughs> Everywhere there's a prophet or a pastor. Pastor, that is glamour. All right. You don't have to wait for somebody to come and say something on behalf of you or to pray on behalf of you. When we worship God, it creates the platform to God to come and to work supernaturally. That is why when we worship God, it is good that you take advantage of his presence. Because God, he's here. He dwells in the praises of his people. Where two or three gather in your name. Surely your presence, his presence is in our midst. And when God is here, supernatural things happen. Miracles take place. Bondages get broken. Lives being transformed. People are being set free. Redemption happens. Salvation happens. Amen. Not through the preaching of the word, not through what we do or what we say. It's through the conviction, encounter with the presence of God. Amen. Amen. I can scream and shout here all day unless God is here. Unless there is encounter with his presence, it is in vain. Come on, somebody say good amen. amen. Right? So God begins to move supernaturally. There was these two guys in Paul and Silas. Not this Paul and Silas. Back in the scriptures. Paul and Silas. Remember what they were doing in the prison? Huh? Scolding at, remember the part where they were scolding at each other and shouting at you? Because of you, no, I ended up here. Remember the part? Yeah? Bad, bad experience, right? They went to mission trip. Doing whose will? God's will. Get what, what happened to them? Wood beaten up. Not enough getting beaten up, put in the prison. So these guys are chained and they're in the lockup. And what they were doing? Shouting at each other. <laughs> oh, big Paul. I followed you, no? <laughs> Must tell me, like, my, 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 my. No. What they were doing? They were singing him, worshiping God. Come on. Many times when we see problem and we don't know what to do, we look for excuse to blame who? Most of the time, it's your wife or your husband. <laughs> Amen. Somebody said it. <laughs> I, I'm sure you didn't want to say that, but it just came out, right? <laughs> uh, you're married? Your wife is next to you? <laughs> Good luck with lunch. <laughs> yeah. 
I, I just love doing that. <laughs> it, make, it make me feel my marriage is better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Any more amens? <laughs> right. So God is good. Amen. Yeah. No, nobody on the same. They didn't complain. They were not murmuring. They were not blaming each other. They were not trying to find excuse. To say it's because of this, because of that, because of him, because of that. They just worshipped. Yeah. When things go wrong, don't find time to take time to blame or find excuse or try to find solution how things went wrong. Instead of that, put that energy, put that focus, put the emphasis on worshiping on the one who can get us out of the trouble. Come on. Amen. So they begin to worship. They begin to exalt God. Same way Jehoshaphat did the same. Say, I'm not going to just sit here and complain. God said, take position. I'm going to take my position. And what I do best, I sing the best. I worship the best. This is the position of every child of God. To be a worshiper of the one true and the living God. Amen. Amen. So what we do? We stand firm and we worship him. And they begin to worship and worship and worship. Prison doors open, man. Chains get shattered. Amen. Yeah, sometimes guitar strings breaks. <laughs> yeah. All right. If you can pull the floor, the lights. And uh, those days, I think you used to have that lights, right? Hanging lights. Yeah. Right. So, uh, uh, no, not this one. Go all the way back. This is the climax. Lo. <laughs> ah, this place. All right. So we got this place. This is basically zinc. It's half cement and rest of it is just zinc. Pastor Clarence and uh, yeah, uh, the first thing was there. So, okay. so we got this place. We painted the floor and it's basically just microwave oven. Right? Just zinc, zinc, zinc. So we bring our, you know, uh, what do you call it? Braid and uh, you know, flour. <laughs> right. we, we, don't, we don't buy snacks. Right? You just leave it. By the time now the service finished, oh, turn, bread, flour, turn into bread, man. And we were like, miracle. <laughs> it was so, so hot. But uh, no, this is where we used to meet. And that is, uh, all right, some of you may not know what is it. It is called cooler. <laughs> all right? So you have to feel water in it. Right? And I think we, we have that here also, right? So these are called desert coolers, huge ones. And they're very quiet. So we, we have these two coolers on the left and right, you know, trying to see who's better, you know, fighting with each other. And so that now we don't get rid of them. So they are, and worship team is jamming, trying to pull the volume out. Right? And the praise team, so we used to scream and shout and preach. Right, and just wait for the time where we can get out of this place. Right. <laughs> so next slide. All right. So we got this. This is how the place looked like. So the guys came over and they painted the place. Right. God gave us a lot of good people, young people who were dedicated. Right. Next, who worked for food. <laughs> uh, yeah. Next one. The sunny. Right. And uh, yeah. And this is how the place looked like. Once we are done, we were inspired by Destiny C3's hanging lights those days, right? Remember? Yeah. So that was it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so we were here. And then we declared our faith. All right? God built a platform to work supernaturally. And now we'll go into that later. And finally, this is what the Bible says. This is, this is what I want you to take back. It says in verse 20, the fear of the Lord came over the kingdom in the area where they heard how the Lord waged war against Israel's army. Verse 30, Jehoshaphat's kingdom was peaceful since, his, uh, since God surrounded him with peace. All right? 
Worship is also the word of our testimony. Joseph didn't plan for a huge crusade. He didn't plan for some big, uh, you know, tracking out to go and give out tracks. How God is awesome, is God. But he just stood there and worshiped. And as he began to worship, God moved and the story went out. Amen. That's why the Bible says, if you would lift my name, I will draw. Amen. And that is the principle we've been operating since in Bangalore. It's just worship, 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 worship. How people come, we don't know, honestly. Bible schools know sometimes they call me up, they say, Pastor, can you come and teach us about pioneering? Bro, I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, so far, the church is there. Both of you are from different parts of the world. Oh, missionary, missionary, come teach. Oh, I, I don't know. All we do is just worship. I don't know how to put the syllabus down. I don't know what is the one, two, three that you need to know. No, I don't know. I don't know what to do. But I know one thing, that is when you worship, things happen. Supernatural things happen. God can use somebody who does not belong here and you begin to worship. He makes things happen and the news gets out. Come on. Hallelujah. And that's the news that will get out. That our God is for us. If you're not for us, you are against us. Peace is in the house. Come on. Yeah? God, the news about Jehoshaphat begin to spread out. You know, when we go to work in our offices and suddenly... The office announces there's going to be 30% salary cut from this month onward. You know what is the first thing that comes from our mouth? <laughs> Don't say, huh? <laughs> when everybody else is cursing the management, when everybody else is calling the boss, when everybody else is putting up their resumes to the next company, what do you do? God is good. Way maker. Hey, what are you doing, man? I'm worshiping the word of my testimony. I don't curse like the world. I don't react like the world. When I go through problems, I don't act like you guys. I worship God. I sing. I declare my faith. That creates a platform to God to move supernaturally. I don't live in this realm of naturally natural uh, natural things. I live in a realm where my God moves supernaturally. Come on. Good. And God is moving supernaturally. God is moving supernaturally his word is going out in a supernatural way destiny c3 people there are a lot of things people were saying you cannot put a sign board up you won't be able to register you won't get recognized by we got everything done we are legally registered as a denomination of destiny c3 that means we can run 100 churches 200 churches 1001 lakh as many churches as you want in Bangalore, in, in India. That's when you see through India. Amen? Amen. God's faithfulness. There are churches with no different names, still finding, struggling to get them registered. But God opened favors, brought the right people in, brought the right lawyers in, right connections. Yeah, the church is a bomb, but still, <laughs> God provided. Amen? And once we got all that done, we changed lawyer. <laughs> no, not much cheaper one now. <laughs> I'm also Malaysian, a typical businessman sometimes. All right. God is faithful. Amen. So we got all that registered. Now I'd like to take you into your wow moment. We have this wow moment back in our church. Because every Sunday, I believe, when people come to church, there has to be a moment where you say, wow. That's God. Amen. Are you ready for your wow moment? Yeah. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, I'm ready. Get ready for your warm moment. All right. 
All right, this is going to be good. I'm going to finish soon, yeah? yeah go on, huh? Okay. <laughs> Die, you are. <laughs> Verse 25. How? I know, by the time I finish, it's just you're going to be praying for your problems. Really. God, give me a problem. You know, this how well it ended to Joseph. Say, Lord, I want problem because if it's gone, this is going to be the end. I want more problems in my life. You ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Really? Come on. Get your neighbor ready. Pinch them. Wake them up. Verse 25 says this. When Jehoshaphat and his troop came to take the loot, from, uh, they found among them a, uh, they found among them a lot of goods. A lot of what? Goods. goods. Somebody say clothes. Goods. And valuables. Yeah. All right. This now new problem. So God gave Joseph, he took the problem away from him. Now God gave Joseph a new problem. You know what's a new problem? Oh, I want this kind of problem. Somebody say, I want problem. <laughs> You're going to regret for not saying that. They found more than they could carry. Whoa. Ah, now you want the problem. He started by saying, Lord, I don't know. This vast army is coming. I'm going to give up. I'm in the verge of losing this. This, this. this heart. I don't know how to handle this problem. Right? We're going to die. We're all going to die. Pochi, hold on. <laughs> right? But then it ended by Joseph saying, We have so much of blessing. We don't know how to carry these blessings. Amen. We have so much of blessing. There's so much of good stuff here. There's so much of valuable things here. The problem is, I don't know how to carry this back home. You know how many days it took them? Three days. How many want this kind of problem? I want this type of problem. Right? Because when God moves, he gives us more than enough. Amen? Amen? Problem. They will... They will, they, they will break our minds supernaturally, right? The God give Joseph a brand new revelation. This is who I am. I'm not just going to deliver you from your problem. I'm not just going to fight for you. But after the fight, when you're faithful, when you stand there and you stake your position, it starts by you standing and taking your position, Standing still, believing in me, trusting me, declaring that who I am and creating the platform for me to move supernaturally. Not only that people are going to know about me and who I am and how I am able to protect my children, bless them, give them more than enough. But I am going to bless you so much that you're going to have problem trying to get hold of this. Amen. Will you stand with me, church? And this is where we are now. Maybe the musicians can come and help me to play. But you are here. And uh, can we have that last slide? Destiny C3. This is the church that started in a place in the house of gangsters. Now we have this nice, huge, huge building. And the next one, this is the Destiny C3 India Pastors team from uh, Destiny C399. We have the Tamil Nadu Pastors, Canada Pastor, Orissa team over the other side. All right. And then we run a midweek service in Tamil every Wednesday. Oria in West Bengal, next one. That is Oria Church in the West Bengal. DC3 Faith, we just got this place. All right, and that's Destiny C3 again. We also got lights like that. All right, yeah, and next, this is how the church is. Uh, yeah, probably you guys can come over and to see what's happening over there. Right, just slides of the slides of church. All right, you know what is more than enough? Can we run the video? This is what God is doing through what you been giving it's not just about the church the church 
the blessings is flowing out of the church now right this is what you've been sowing so every once in a while you get this truck and we have a lot of stuffs been collected Over Sunday, we'll drive to the nearby locality and we gave away books, shoes, stationeries, clothes, blankets, toys for children. Right? More clothes, lots and lots of toys. The church, Destiny C3, has given out 150,000 meals, right? Uh, I can't remember the number of clothes we have given out. There's a lot of clothes. We get calls after calls, people giving out clothes, and we go and collect them, and we give it out to people, furnitures, uh, stationaries for children's books. And this is because you're sowing your seats. Amen? This is where... Everything that you sow goes is beyond your expectation. It takes days for us to gather data. Actually, it does where all these blessings are flowing. Because you invested in a church that was started against this house. Today, God is blessing probably the entire Bangalore very soon. Amen. Shall we just lift our hands? If you are here this morning and you're in the place. We are saying, I don't know what to do. Now I believe this morning, God has a word for you. And He says this, you have to take your position. Don't leave. Don't run away. Stand firm. Worship. Declare who He is. create that platform as we begin to worship God will come down and there is a miracle for you waiting today not tomorrow not next week today right now at this moment are you ready for your miracle Raymaker Declare it, church. Rain make miracle work. Promise me light in the darkness. That is who my God is who you are. Rain make a miracle work. Promise me light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. Come on, let's declare it, declare it, declare it. This is who you are. You are a miracle worker. You are a miracle worker. This is what you are. You are my light in the darkest hour of my life. You are my light. You are my light, you are my light, in the darkest hour of my life. You are my light, oh God. Hallelujah. Yeah.
God, you are my redemption, oh God. Hallelujah. My redemption, this is who you are to me. Hallelujah. This who you are. Come on. What do you need this morning? Say, God, you are my provider this morning. Whatever you need. You are my help this morning. You are my peace this morning. You are my healing this morning, oh God. You are my salvation this morning. Hallelujah. You are my miracle worker this morning. Hallelujah. God, you are everything to me this morning. You are my father this morning. You are my Lord this morning. You are my God this morning. Hallelujah. Father, I pray this morning in the name of Jesus. Faith and release in your house, the house of your people, in the name of Jesus, as they worship you, God, as your people declare who you are, as we declare and sing who you are, let faith be released in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you come and you work the supernatural miracle in each one of our lives this morning, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, miracle, miracle, miracle in Jesus' name. And this will be our non-verbal testimony. The people will see us and declare the goodness of our God through our lives. Amen. Amen. God is good. All the time. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Barrett. How many of you were encouraged this morning? We serve a miracle working God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor Barrett, Pastor Jaya, and the team uh, in India doing such an amazing job. So, uh, those of you who feel like going to India, Bangalore, anytime, we'll arrange a few trips next year. And uh, you will be blessed by the work that God is doing through the church, through the ministry. Amen? Amen. We're very proud of you guys. Very, very proud of you. Yeah. Keep up the amazing work. Amen. Amen. Come, let's close the meeting. Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you, Lord, for faith that has risen even in the hearts of your people, oh Lord. Even as we are reminded, Lord, when we do not know what to do, to fix our eyes on you. You never stop working, O oh Lord. Even when we don't feel it, we don't, we don't see it, we may not be uh, physically experiencing it right now, O oh Lord, but we know our God is good and He is faithful. And we rest in that assurance. Thank you, Father. Lord, I bless your people even as they leave this place. May your hands be upon them. May they be worshippers, may they be praisers, and may they see miracles even this week over their lives, over their homes, over their families. We release that even right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You know, if you're here for the first time, we'd love to meet up with you.